He's got Diving it. save. Liza Carlin for three. Oh, and it's going to be Bloomquist. What a save. 15, 10, 5. Lago looking to go all the way. He scores. He tried it with the block. That's has got him down. That's how you do it. There's a fire, and he just picked his spot. Center repent. Score. Welcome back to Ponies All Access, our first edition here of the 2020-2021 school year. I'm your host, uh, Ted LaRue. Mike Peden will join us here in just a moment. But what a wild fall sports season it was. Will they or won't they start here for a few of the sports? Of course, football and volleyball were those sports that uh, uh, wasn't going to happen. They were going to get pushed back to the spring, and then eventually they got involved. We're now joined by our co-host, uh, Mike Pete and Mike, what a fall season here uh, across the state of Minnesota and especially here in Stillwater. It ended up being a very successful fall, though, uh, for the Ponies. That it was. Girls soccer, boys soccer winning section titles, football and volleyball weren't able to get that far. The fact that we were able to get a fall season was impressive. Unfortunately, cases spiked toward the end. That's what led to this pause. And there has been a lot of discussions about whether or not sports should be played right now. I know in the college and the pro circuits, the NFL, college basketball, college football, they're dealing with a lot of coronavirus cases. So we're all playing this big, giant guessing game. But with two vaccine candidates, hopefully more, perhaps we'll be able to get some more games in, whether that's the winter or the spring, we don't know. But things are looking more optimistic than they did just a few months ago. All we can do is remain optimistic at this point. We have no idea what's, what's ahead of us um, right now. But, uh, but Mike, we're going to start things off here um, with, and we'll go back and forth here on, the, on football. We're going to start things off with football. And this was a, as after a couple of years um, where the ponies kind of kind of trailed off a little bit. This is a year where they finally um, got back on track. So this is a, this is a good year, good kind of rebound year for this ponies football team. Good rebounding year and perhaps the wildest, most topsy-turvy season I have ever witnessed. And I was watching the broadcast from home and following the box scores. When Stillwater won, they won big. When Stillwater lost, they got destroyed. There was no middle ground. Look at some of these scores here. 52-24 win over White Bear Lake. 45-0 loss to Woodbury. 49-0 loss to Shakopee. 63-28 win over Creighton Durham Hall. You never knew what to expect with this team. But they did finish 4-3. and three. They've been on a slow upward trajectory over the last few years. And this year, no exception. I have to think they'll have quite a few building blocks going into next season. Well, I think one big thing um, about this football team, and you mentioned the scores, the offensive output in some of those games. The big thing was playmakers on offense. I think in, you know we've only been here for a couple of years, the last few years before this, but... In those years, I think one area where maybe they didn't have as much of a strength was playmaking ability. A guy or a couple of guys that you could ball, put the ball in their hands and you knew that they could take it to the house. Dom Krenz, a running back, showed that a few times um, this year. They moved Max Schickenjanski from backup quarterback um, to their main wide receiver this year after the uh, graduation of Lou Cullen there at wide receiver. And they had playmakers, and they're going to have playmakers um, returning on this offense and on defense. We'll have a chat here, a pre-recorded chat with head coach Bo Labor in just a minute, and he'll kind of talk about strength in the offensive and defensive line, deep in the trenches. That's where a lot of football games are won, and they were very good um, on that side of the football. But a big response after a couple of two and seven seasons. Last year, they win three games, and then this year, a four-win season uh, for the Stillwater Ponies. I was able to catch up with head coach Bo Labor, sit down virtually, and here's how that conversation went. What a crazy year uh, this has been for you, especially for football. The football and volleyball group kind of got put into a weird spot where it was on again, off again <laughs> to kind of start the season you were going to play in March. But then you're practicing. You were allowed some practice time at that time. And then you get the news, oh, you're going to be playing in a few weeks. How did you kind of respond when that decision was made as a football team? Well, one thing we've emphasized with our students and athletes since March is that if they're going to get anything out of this experience, it's going to be that they need to be resilient they need to be flexible. They need to be able to adapt. And uh, for a long time, we've always said the in football, the great ones can adjust. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, So we, we basically just approached it. uh, Like we, we know we got our workouts in the summer, so let's do a great job with our workouts. We know we get our camp in the summer. Let's have a great camp. Uh, When we found out that we had a couple of weeks of practice, actually they allowed us three weeks and 12 sessions. We decided that we would take 10 over two weeks and compress it. And uh, before the end of that second week was when we found out that we would get uh, an actual season, an abbreviated season. So it was a seamless transition for us in that situation. Uh, So we've just kind of taken it uh, one step at a time, focused on what we can control, not get overly worried about decisions that other people are going to make. And that has uh, made for us to, 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 it's allowed us to be grateful for what we have, worry about what we can control and then just figure out the rest as it comes. You were one of the few programs, Stillwater was one of the few programs, it seemed that way, at least in 6A, where you guys got all through your regular season games, you played the playoff game as well. Was What was kind of the precautions, what were the protocols inside of the program that kind of allowed you to kind of get through the season, whereas other teams had some postponements and, uh, again, cancellations? Yeah, I, I looked at it at the end of the year. I think it was just above 50% of the – 6A programs uh, did not have their entire season and and just short of 50% did. So we were very uh, fortunate in that situation. I think that it comes with uh, some diligence. I think we were diligent. Uh, We we had been diligent all summer. And then uh, we, we had a test run during our camp and we recognized some things that we needed to do better Uh, kids uh, huddling around where their water was placed during uh, any given breaks. And, uh, you know, we we just, that's just one example of how we figured we could fine tune some things. And then when we actually got into the fall practice and we got into uh, the season, uh, we did a lot of things that we we ordinarily wouldn't do and don't want to do. We, we adjusted the way that we lift we didn't have really any t- full team meetings outside of the end of practice where it was like a five minute deal, uh, get in and get out. Uh, we limited our indoor meetings. Uh, we limited our, uh, you know, we usually met on every Monday and Tuesday. Uh, most of those weeks during the game, the, the game weeks, we only met one time. And uh, we did a lot of the regular protocol stuff and we weren't perfect, but we worked at it and we were, uh, persistent. Uh, kids, uh, even kids that are at football that really want to be at football and want to see their season take place, they're not very good at social distancing. And so uh, if I had, you know, I joked around with some coaches at the end of the season, if I had to say, uh, you know, spread out one more time, I think I might have freaked out. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about the season um, as a whole. You guys definitely took a big jump forward as Metro East Sub-District champions, four uh, and two record. Coming into the season, did you kind of know what you had? Did you feel comfortable? Did you feel pretty happy with what you had? Um, obviously, with Casey returning at quarterback, Dom made some plays um, in the backfield, and then, of course, Max going out to, to wide receiver. Did you feel like you had a team that could possibly contend uh, for the top of the, the district like you did this year? Well, we had some guys back in some key positions, like you said, which is always helpful. Uh, but we, we had to replace a lot of guys too. So, you know, I think everybody, uh, as much as, and sometimes you can, you, can, you can lose a guy from one year to the next and the guy that steps in is better, or you can lose a guy and, and you, you're not exactly sure who you're gonna fill that position with. So it's, it's, not a, it's not an exact science at the high school level. We felt really good about the fact that we had kids coming back that were really serious about football. They really wanted to do well. They showed that in the winter workouts. They showed it in the summer workouts, and they got after it in practice. Uh, we, uh, it's, it's beneficial to have experience on the defensive line and the quarterback position. Um, we had some guys uh, step in and, and, and fill some big roles. Uh, you know, we, we didn't know who, who Luke Cullen was going to be. Uh, who's who's the this year's version of that and yep. and we didn't know that until we were actually practicing for White Bear Lake when we we said let's just line guys up uh, we didn't do our normal testing because of COVID-19 in the summer and so we didn't have a sheet of paper to look at with a bunch of 40s on the on the sheet and we said well let's just line them up and see who's fast and we realized that you know we couldn't have Max 
Shick and Jansky playing backup quarterback, he had to play a wide receiver. Uh, and so I could give you a number of other examples of where you just got to kind of see how the pieces come together, but we were definitely better up front. Uh, it gave us a much better opportunity to stop the run. If you can stop the run, uh, things are going to, things are going to work out a little bit better for you. Uh, we were more dynamic in the backfield. Uh, we had two guys that we could lean on instead of just one, which is typical. And both of them have uh, had just a little bit of extra speed that, that made some things happen for us. And I think, uh, again, that seriousness and the overall um, quality of work that was put in uh, by this group from ninth through 12th grade or ninth through 11th grade, and especially over the last year, really stood out on special teams. We always think that we're as good as anybody that we're going to play in special teams. But uh, overall, we were pretty sturdy and we had good speed. It also helps to be able to recruit out a, a pretty good leg from the soccer team that's uh, not going to miss any PATs and, and is going to give you a chance on, on some field goals. Your lower level teams, your JVs and things like that, they did extremely well as well this year. Did pretty good last year, but this year they re- it seemed that they really took a – so let's talk about that youth program. What exactly – and let's talk about the future. Um, obviously a great season this year. Um, obviously, you know, you maybe want to take a couple of steps further, but those younger groups right now, kind of talk about the development of those younger groups and the success they have and what that could mean for these varsity teams in the next couple of years. Right. So yeah, anytime you win a conference championship, it's a, it's a heck of a season. And and under these circumstances to even get the games in was, was to a degree an accomplishment. And we were able to play all of our games, uh, ninth, 10th, JV and varsity uh, until the end. We had to let go of two of our JV games because uh, our whole JV offensive bus got shut down. Uh, Bus trip longer than 30 minutes. You got um, uh, one positive test in the whole bus, including the coach gets knocked out. So we had to deal with that those last two weeks. But uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, we, we had some, some good success. Uh, Our, our, our coaching staffs are great. You know, a lot of, a lot of programs, uh, you can kind of tell that they, are trying to find someone to step in and do some coaching at the ninth or 10th grade level. Mm-hmm. Uh, we take that very seriously. We've got continuity in those places. We've got great leadership. We've got guys that have been here and, are, and have a, a great deal of experience and, and keep that expectation level very high. Uh, I think that's definitely part of it. Uh, but we, uh, we've, we've had some good players uh, that, that there's, there's been some really good players coming through over the last three years. Our ninth grade has only lost one game in the last three years. And uh, that was two years ago. Uh, and sometimes uh, ninth grade doesn't equal sophomore or even varsity, ex- uh, you know, success. Uh, but with that said, we, we're finding that we have some kids. We, we, our numbers are down. A lot of programs can say that. Mm-hmm. But the intensity and the focus and some of the athleticism that we have is up. And so we're doing a good job of putting kids in positions where they can be successful. And uh, the biggest thing with them is if they've enjoyed any of this success, they've got to carry it over into the off season, whether it's a sport in the winter and the spring, or it's the weight room winter, spring and summer, it's uh, they're going to decide whether or not they're going to have more success in the future. Moving from one Pony Stadium sport to another Pony Stadium sport, from football to girls' soccer. This girls' soccer team, led by head coach Mike Huber, had a lot of returning players, a lot of excitement here coming into this 2020 campaign as we bring in Mike Peden once again, of course, expert all thing Stillwater girls' soccer. And, and Mike, this was a team that had a lot returning. Of course, Lexi Huber uh, committed to University of St. Thomas, now a Division I school, of course. She kind of led the charge. Marissa Bonilla uh, was in there as well. Sophie Steble had some, had some nice plays during the season. This was a team that uh, they ended up winning uh, the section championship. But if there was going to be a state tournament, they were going to be right there at the top. This could have been their year. Any of their years really could be their year. Uh, unfortunately, the Pepsi fridge uh, will not get to be enjoyed by either of us. At least that was the case this fall. But the reason why Ted and I are making this note, Stillwater finished the season as the number one team in Class 2A based on the Minnesota State High School Coaches Association poll. Stillwater, Rosemount, Edina, Stillwater ran the table quite the season. 
They allowed a total of five goals in their conference schedule, won all but one of their games, that one exception, a 1-1 draw to Moundsview. But the more things change, the more they stay the same. They beat Eastridge again in the section final. And this season perhaps is more difficult than others because on the one hand, as you're about to see with my Zoom interview with the Stillwater girls, coaching staff, Mike Huber, Lexi Huber, Marissa Bonilla. They were glad they got to play, but you do wonder what if. That being said, it was a tremendous season and a great transition year of sorts for Lexi Huber, a great way to introduce herself to her future fan base at St. Thomas. 21 goals, Bonilla had 12, Lexi Huber nine assists as well. So this kid's got a bright future, and I had a chance to speak to her and the rest of the Stillwater staff on the Zoom call about said future. You finished the season unbeaten, just one draw and 13 wins. You end the season as the number one team in Class 2A. If there was a state tournament, who knows what could have happened there, but what did you make of this season that is probably unlike any other? Everyone, including myself, was just grateful that we even got the chance to play. And we just made the best out of our season. We worked hard every day at practice, and it was just fun. We made the best out of it. What was your mood like not knowing if we were going to have a season, as you alluded to, Lexi, and then you find out there would be an opportunity to at least get some games in. And in the shortened season where you played all conference games, you still made the most of it. I mean, 13-0-1, that's a pretty solid mark. Having it being like my last year, my senior year, I just wanted to like make the best out of it and see what we could do. So, What were some of your favorite moments or opportunities from the fall season where you got to go on this impressive run and continue your streak of section titles? Well, last year we lost in the shootout with the shootout, so that we all just kind of took, we all just wanted like wanted to come back, back after that and like show like people like what we can do and like do our best. I think a big moment in our season was winning the conference because we hadn't done that in a bunch of years. So I think that was good for us. I think the last time still are like this kind of catch what both of them said is the last time still I think we had an undefeated season was back in 1998. So to go through the entire year winning conference, you know, getting winning the section for the third year in a row, even that has something that hasn't been done in the conference, much less Stillwater. I don't know if Stillwater's ever done it. Um, however, even in the conference, I don't think that's been done for, you know, it's probably since the mid 2000s. You've been through a lot as a former soccer player, now as a coach. So when you got word that your team would be able to play a fall season, what goals did you set for the team? What advice did you offer? How do you coach the team as you normally would? And how do you make sure they stay safe if you get what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, when, when we were told that we we're going to have a fall season, obviously we knew things would be different. Um, and it wouldn't be the same as it's been in the past. Um, however, I think a lot of our, and I think the girls would probably agree with this, I think a lot of our practices, I mean, for the most part, we're pretty similar to what we did in the in the past because we were even even non-COVID, you know, we were always, I mean, soccer is kind of a socially distant game, shall we say. Um, and it was just a matter of the things like, you know, wearing masks in and out of the stadium, um, you know, coming to or using hand sanitizers, you know, or, you know, after a practice, um, you know, and obviously not posting social media posts where girls are on top of each other or together all the time. Um, so, I mean, that, you know, those are the types of things that I think we had to kind of watch, watch out for, but I think the way the season went, I don't think the preparation was really any different than it would have been any other year. You know, it's just, we were glad to have a season, you know, we didn't know quite how the postseason would ever look, or even if we get to a postseason. Um, and they said, thankful we did. So, so what was different about this season compared to previous seasons and what stayed the same? What do you think uh, just felt like normal? As you said, there was there were some changes, but at the same time, you were able to go about your routine and not feel out of place. From my end of it, at least, the you know, the, the big difference on mine was not being able to play at teams outside of our conference. 
you know, knowing that we'd be one of the better teams in the state, it would have been nice. You know, we had Edina, we had Centennial, uh, we had Lakeville North, we had Rosemount. Um, all those were on our schedule. So knowing that we couldn't play those teams and find out how we stood against the rest of the state, you know, was was it was a change. Um, and then also too, even up until the last possible day, we still had no idea, you know, hey, this we may not have a postseason, we may not have a section game, we don't know if we're going to have state. Um, we just had no idea, you know, until really the last minute, almost on all cases, whether we'd be playing or not. So I think that was more the challenge. I think is just getting ready for those, you know, what ifs, you know, rather than the actual game itself. What did you take away from this experience? And how do you think that's going to strengthen your resolve moving forward? Um, well, I think for the girls coming back next year, we're going to like not take anything for granted. Like all of our games are season. Like hopefully we'll have a state tournament next year. And so we'll continue to play the games like our hardest, but um, we'll be grateful that we'll get a chance to go on to state. Girls soccer were section champions in 4AA. Who else was section champions? Boys soccer as well. So a double dip in terms of the soccer teams, both winning section titles. And Mike, this boys team kind of entered in not so much like the girls did. Girls, as we talked about, entered with a lot of experience, a lot of returners, a little bit of an uncertainty uh, for Jake Smothers' program. But they were able to kind of put it all together. They rallied through the section tournament to come home with the trophy. A big reason for that, the return of Gora Gora, his enrollment in the development program ended when the program folded up, so he was able to come back to Stillwater, and Jake Smothers jokingly said it's one of those unfortunately, fortunately situations. Of course, he'll always pull for his athletes, whether they succeed on his Stillwater teams or succeed elsewhere, so no territorial instincts whatsoever, but Gora scored 13 goals, Carson Arco seven, Matt Folden six. The Stillwater boys team needed a little time to gel. They only had two wins in their first six games. They went two, two and two at the end of that stretch, but then ended the rest of the season with all W's, eight straight, including the section run. They did not enter the top 10 in the class two A rankings. So who knows what would have happened if there was a state tournament, if they would have been seated or not. But in a sport like soccer, all you need is a seat at the table. And this Stillwater Boys program has a strong pedigree. It was a great rebounding year for them. And I got into more detail with that with Jake Smothers and an assortment of players from the boys team. It was a condensed season. You were able to get in a section round, though, a section playoff and if there was a state tournament, who knows what would have happened, but to come back and regroup and take the section again and continue the tradition that Stillwater soccer has established for a long time. Uh, what would you make of the fall campaign? You know, obviously the results of the season and what we were able to accomplish was, was, uh, was extraordinary. Um, you know, we had, you know, it was a very different feel to it initially because there were restrictions that the boys had to process and, um, and get used to. But I think from a sporting perspective, when, once we were on the field and, and got through the, the different protocols that we had to, to just to ensure that we were able to play, uh, from a sporting perspective, I was really proud of the way the boys uh, handled the season. Now, you know, we, we lost a few games, obviously. Uh, I think we ended up playing – I added this up the other day. I think we ended up playing 16 games and on a state championship season. If we play in the final, we would have played maxed out at 22. So, you know, it, even though it was condensed, it wasn't, you know, we didn't lose a ton. And, and I thought we got still got to play the important games of the season. You know, we want to play East Ridges and Woodbury's and, and our conference. It would have been fun to go out and play some of our non-conference opponents because we, we enjoy those matches. But um, that, that to me, that sense um, was the same. What's next for you guys with your high school soccer careers finished and as you get ready to make this transition in the most unusual of circumstances, but, you know, do you plan on playing in college? Do you have other aspirations? Uh, where are we going to, where are we going to hear about you as you uh, make that transition from high school to college? Um, for me, I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure if I'm going to go to college but it's looking likely that I'm going to go play uh, college soccer. 
But, you know, I was satisfied with my high school soccer career because um, I went 2-0 in the second championships, and I think I would have gone 2-0 in state too. You know, but the most important thing is I got the ring. <laughs> True. <laughs> uh, I'm also, I'd say, satisfied with my high school soccer career. I mean, obviously a s- state championship would have been nice, but – I mean, I'm happy with the conference and section champs and how I played. Um, and in the future, uh, I'm not a not 100 percent sure if I'm going to play in college. I've been kind of looking at it if I'm going to play on the, like the college team or just like intramural in the like, club. But I think I'll definitely go to college. Just the question of where and if I'll play, I'm not sure yet. Yeah, um, I'm definitely. Uh, I definitely love this season for sure. I mean. We had a great season, finished off strong, uh, started strong. But um, I love this season, the team and everyone. Uh, I am I do want to go to college. I'm still working on the where, but I do plan on playing soccer in college. Moving to the court for volleyball. This was a volleyball team that this season um, was bringing a few players back here um, in 2020, but as we welcome in Mike Peden once again, this was a volleyball team. Bob Fisher decides to go as the head coach of this team, and you get a new head coach uh, to kind of step things up. A lot of new faces uh, on the volleyball team, but although they weren't able to get that section uh, playoff in, they still ended up having a pretty good season. If we would have had sections, they we might have seen Stillwater and North St. Paul back in that final. A distinct possibility. We'll never know, of course. Section 4-3A up for grabs in that sense. You mentioned a lot of faces coming back. A big change for Stillwater. Not only did they have a new coach in Sarah Biermeyer, but the face of the program for the last couple of seasons, Maddie Whittington, was no longer with the team. That's because she graduated and is now playing for the Illinois volleyball team. So talk about a transition. New coach new identity. Stillwater was able to put something together. They stumbled a bit at the end of the regular season. They lost their last three, but not before they had an impressive nine game winning streak. Sarah Biermeyer in our conversation said it would be an understatement as far as going in, not knowing what to expect. Next fall should be a little closer to normal, but all things considered, the fact they're able to get in a season and gel and put together a solid campaign was impressive. I had a chance to speak with Sarah and a couple of the volleyball players. Let's take you to that interview. Probably the strangest season you've all ever had. I know, Sarah, you came in. This is your first year, but I don't think there's any playbook or blueprint on how to approach a season like this. And, you know, Olivia and Sydney you're used to competing in sections and going to state in some cases. And, you know, to find out your season ended a couple of weeks ago, just what do you make of this whole situation? Yeah, well, I guess I will touch on, um, so being like a first year coach in a season like this, it was very unique. Um, as you can imagine, it was, um, It was stressful at points, to say the least, just in not knowing what comes next and trying to lead a program and um, it with such uncertainty. But with all that said, um, I'm so proud of how the girls did and how their attitude, how they um, remained positive throughout all of it. We all played so well together throughout the season and that the team unity was so high this year. I mean, I hope that that's just what they remember is how... um, how good of teammates we were, despite um, the season being a little bit shorter than it usually is. It did suck, like having COVID kind of stop the things that we were really looking forward to. But honestly, I was just so grateful that we were able to have a season and like I was able to play for a senior year. Um, unlike some people last year didn't get that. So I was just really excited and happy that I was able to play. Like, even though this was like a rebuilding year because of our new coaches, it was definitely a a lot better rebuilding year than I think we all had anticipated. And so it kind of sucked once our season ended because I knew how far we could have gone. You did get a nine game win streak in your conference with the conference season. Uh, you finished nine and four. So 
with, I don't know what the expectations were, but I would say you, you did a good job making the most out of everything with all of the new elements you had to incorporate. Yeah. Coach Sarah always just kept reminding us, like, don't take anything for granted or this could be our last game. And we just always have that motto that we always play for each other and not just for ourselves. So yeah, my definitely, I definitely played for my seniors and of course all my other players, but especially coming to the end, we started just focusing on like, like we can't, we can't take um, competing for granted and you should never waste an opportunity to compete, especially in those circumstances we have. It was a strictly conference schedule, no weekend invitationals that make up a good portion, I think half or something about that during the season that you're used to, no non-conference games. So all of the routines that you're accustomed to get shaken up in this shortened season. How did that affect your approach, if at all? It put a lot of pressure on each game, to be quite honest, because you would just get one game, two games per week. And um, so you really had to make the most of it. Towards the end there, we had our last three games were back to back to back. And I um, really wish we could have had a practice in between there to just like work on a few things before our next match. But um, that's just is what it is. I mean, that's kind of the reality of the season. I mean, it just is what it is. So you just kind of have to make the most of what you have. Um, it would have been definitely to have nice to have more games and to play outside of our conference. But we are lucky to have had such a competitive conference. You talked about how much you enjoyed the the clarity, the maturity, and the, the perspective the girls had on this season. Um, what would you say you enjoyed the most about this first season as head coach? Truthfully, it's all of the little moments. Like, it's what you love about being a coach. I love hearing about their days. It's not always just volleyball related. Like, the little laughs that you can have um, when you are telling somebody to fix something and they do and they see that it works and it's just those moments of knowing that they're having fun and um, that really make everything worth it, makes all the hard times worth it. And yeah, I would say it's just being an overall coach. I don't know. I mean, I love it. So it was a great time. Another great year for Stillwater Athletics. We kind of went down a you know, football, girls soccer, boys soccer, volleyball, all with great seasons. And uh, yeah, as we said, who would have known what would have happened if volleyball was able to, to finish their season. But great seasons with football winning the sub-district, girls and boys soccer both winning section championships. Another team that won a section title was girls swimming and diving. Yet another section title. They swim up. They, they show up, I should say, they show up, they swim, they win section titles. That's exactly what Brian Luke's program does in the pool at Stillwater Area uh, High School as well. Big congrats this fall to Anna Weaver. 1642.6, that is a state record in the 5K cross country um, for Stillwater. Uh, she, uh, that was in a meet versus uh, Forest Lake. So Mike, as we bring in Mike here one last time, Another great season. You know, it's a broken record. You know, this, this year, this pandemic year has been different in a lot of ways. But if we're talking about Stillwater sports, uh, same old, same old, right? Same but different. Stillwater sports, a lot of success. Boys and girls soccer continuing their traditions. Volleyball, they have a lot of promise. And to finish up on volleyball, they got a couple of all-conference selections. The Volleyball Coaches Association released the list earlier this week, and Sydney DeJarnett and Lauren Rineker, both seniors, got the all-conference nod. There were three honorable mentions as well. I think everyone is looking forward to a more normal campaign, but yeah, you do wonder what if had this been a normal year. Well, you and I would have been deep into the winter sports schedule by now, but I'd have to think, Ted, you and I would have gotten to cover a lot of playoff sporting events with soccer, football. They did get the num one of the uh, one seeds in Class 6, A. Let's not forget about that. So who knows? I think you and I would have picked up a lot of mileage, especially with football and soccer. But another great season. Hopefully next year we'll be able to have a state tournament again, and then we can go all the way and enjoy some Pepsi at U.S. Bank Stadium maybe for both soccer and football and maybe make another trek to the axe for volleyball. 
We mentioned, and or I mentioned it in the interview with football co head coach Bo Labor there, that they did a lot of 6A teams. He said it in the interview that half of the 6A football teams got games canceled uh, or postponed due to COVID-19. Now, correct me because you might be more plugged in with these soccer and volleyball teams, but I don't think they had any games uh, kind of postponed or canceled as well, or if they did, it was very few. So Stillwater as a whole, top to bottom uh, as an athletic program, did very well in trying to prevent um, a lot of cases from showing up and cancellations and everything. So, you know, in this year where that is kind of the core of what's going on, Stillwater, I think, did a, good, good, did a pretty good job in kind of keeping, trying to keep things as under control as much as they could. Illustrating that point in my conversation with the boys' soccer team, you saw in the interview, they all spoke at length about the discipline, the fortitude they all had to contribute to to ensure they would have a season. They all said, yeah, it would have been fun to hang out or do things they would normally do, but in the back of their mind, they knew that any one of those decisions could increase the risk of a missed game or a missed season, and nobody wanted to let the rest of their brethren down. So you saw all these teams stick together, which is remarkable, gratifying when you hear reports from elsewhere. It wasn't confirmed, but supposedly there were teams and programs that got angry over positive tests or tried to downplay it. Stillwater, they took it seriously from the start. They understood this is what has to be done if we want to have a season. And even though they didn't get the ending that anyone wanted, I think everyone would have loved the chance to find out, would you have won a state championship? When you're an athlete, it's only natural, but something is better than nothing, especially for those seniors that got to play a season compared to the spring where every sport was canceled. So the seniors looking to play at college programs got another year, got that last opportunity to make a case. The juniors have some new game film to submit to scouts. So even though it wasn't the win everyone was looking for as far as getting all the way to a state tournament, having a season of any kind was a win. And as you said, for Stillwater to complete their season without any mishaps or rescheduling, anything like that, it's pretty impressive. Uh, it, one part luck, one part determination. And as a result, we got a few more highlights to share. Exactly. Now, if you go to, you're speaking of state championships, we'll kind of quickly wrap up on this. If you go to pre-BCS college football rules, the number one team in the poll is the state champion. So I guess we can declare girls soccer and Mike Huber's squad under pre-BCS rules as state champion in girls soccer. Um, so that'll wrap things up here for the fall episode of Ponies All Access. We're looking forward to bringing you our winter edition of Ponies All Access sometime in the spring. Until then, he's Mike Peden. Mike, thanks for joining us virtually. I think this worked out pretty good here this first time doing this. Looking forward to getting back in the studio with you at some point. And again, with that vaccine, if it rolls out smoothly, it may not be long because I'm dying to get some sandwich from that particular deli place, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I think we're all dying for that and some more sports here. So that'll wrap things up here from the studio and from the home of Mr. Mike Pete. And until the winter or spring, we'll see you down the road. Diving save. Liza Carlin for three. Goes out. It's going to be Bloomquist. What a save. 15, 10, 5. Lago looking to go all the way. He scores. He tried it with the block. That's has got him down. That's how you do it. There's a fire, and he just picked his spot. Center repent. Score!